for you. We've got Chao Kui Tiao, Lassi Lemak, Ice Cream, Boba Tea and many, many food waiting for you. Come and fellowship with us. Where is Tiger Arena? Visit our website on how to get there. If you are driving, carpooling is encouraged due to limited parking. If you take the MRT, stop at Kwasa Central Station and then grab there. Just a note, remember to bring your portable fans, your caps, your sunblock and even your picnic mat. Get ready for Game On! If you're new to our church, do fill up the Connect card as we would love the opportunity to connect with you. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. 
You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. Team July, Tiger Arena, 9 a.m. Come with your family, friends, get everyone for our SIVKL Family Fun Day. There will be fun games for all ages and there are disc golf, pickleball, cornhole, bottle bash and spike ball too. Join us at the kids area. We even have this specially made for you. We have a petting zoo. You can pet them, hug them, kiss them, but just don't kill them, okay? Remember to bring your colouring gears as well because there will be a colouring competition. And we even have water play! <laughs> so parents, remember to bring extra clothes for your kids because... We got delicious food waiting for you. We got chakwitiao, lassi lemak, ice cream, boba tea and many many food waiting for you. Come and fellowship with us. Where is Tiger Arena? Visit our website on how to get there. If you are driving, carpooling is encouraged due to limited parking. If you take the MRT, stop at Kwasa Central Station and then grab there. Just a note, remember to bring your portable fans, your caps, your sunblock and even your picnic mat. Get ready for Game On!
our church, do fill up the Connect card as we would love the opportunity to connect with you. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. It's time for Game On! 19 July, Tiger Arena, 9am. Come with your family, friends, get everyone for our SIBKL Family Fun Day. There will be fun games for all ages and there are Disc Golf, Pickleball, Cornhole, Bottle Bash and Spike Ball 2. Join us at the kids area. We even have this specially made for you. And welcome back to SIBKL Service One. You know, over here, we are here live in Bangunan Yin and we want to welcome you. It always feels good to be back in church. I've been away for a while, you know, but oh my gosh, I, I love it being back in church right now because this is home. This is home. Hi everybody, I am Pastor Aaron. I'm one of the pastors here in SIBKL and I'm here to welcome each and every one of you back home. You know, before we start our service, we always love to greet our guests in this place. So if you are new here for the very first time, you know, we want to greet you. So if you're new here for the first time, can I see a show of hands? You raise your hand. Hi, welcome to SIBKL. Hi, sir. Could you continue to leave your hands up? We have a special gift for you, just for you. Anybody else? Anybody else that's, that's new in this place? First time, very first time in this place. Anybody else? 
Any show of hands? Any show of hands? If, the, if you are here for the very first time, do raise up your hands because we have a very special gift for you. The, our connectors and our ambassadors will pass you a bag. Inside that bag, there is going to be a card. Fill up that card and after this service, head outside, there will be a connect counter. Submit that card to the connect, connect counter and you will get a very special gift. And after service, head down to our fourth floor to our hospitality lounge as well because we would like to get to know you and we would love to bless you as well. And for those of you that are online, there is a QR code that will be over here. Just scan it if you are new, scan it and fill up your details because we would like to get to know you as well. You know, SIBKL is a giving church and we are known for a culture of giving. You know, so this time we would just like to say, you know, if you want to give your tithes and offering, there is a QR code here to scan. If not, there is also a box just right outside. You can drop your tithes and offering outside, all right? And before that, let's just pray for our tithes and offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your providence and we thank you, Lord, that you provide for us, Lord. So, Heavenly Father, what we can do as a form of worship is to just give back to you. Give back to you what you've given to us, Lord. And Lord, we pray for good stewardship of the funds, that this church will manage the funds well, and Lord, would expand your kingdom and bless many more. In Jesus' most mighty name we pray. Amen. Just a quick reminder, this weekend service is communion weekend, all right? We have communion every first week of the month. So if you are here in this place and you've walked in and you did not get a communion emblem, could you raise your hands right now? Our communion men will give you the communion emblems. If you did not receive a communion emblem, you just raise your hands right now, okay? If you are watching online, just a reminder to get uh, a little bit of juice, a little bit of bread or cracker because we are going to have communion after service. All right. All right, guys, are you ready to worship God? Yeah. Yeah, come on. Let's, let's all stand. And we're going to first start off with a scripture declaration. Amen. We're going to read from Psalms 145, verse 3 to verse 7. Can we do this together? And we're going to declare this strong, all right? All right, in the count of three. One, two, three. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commands your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. Come on, church. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Come on, let's give it to God. Worship team, over to you. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to declare the awesome works of our God. Amen. Church, we're going to declare the awesome works of our God. Amen. We're going to sing the new song that we sang last week. It says, we proclaim in the name of Jesus. So why don't we sing it along with us? You echo in Jesus' name. And now we proclaim in Jesus' name. Walls fall down in Jesus' name. Strongholds break in Jesus' name. Amen. Come we have to church. We are healed. We are healed in Jesus' name. There are many. Now we proclaim, now we proclaim 
Jesus Christ from the dead is that same power that's living in all of us. Amen. Amen. And we can operate in the authority that the Lord has given us. Amen. 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 Don't we serve such an amazing and powerful God. Amen. 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 Church, let's come and let's fix our eyes on Jesus, the all-powerful one. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. That everything of this world will fade away as we fix our eyes on Jesus. Let Jesus be our first love. Let Jesus take the first place in our lives as we turn our eyes. Turn your eyes.
glory and our pride. We adore you, behold you, our Savior ever true. Oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. Let's sing it once again. Jesus, to you we lift our eyes. Jesus, to you we lift our eyes. Let all everything else fade away, Lord. Jesus, our glory and our pride. We adore you, behold you, our Savior and the truth. Oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. unveiled faces behold the glory of the Lord behold the image of our God that we may be transformed from glory to glory into your likeness Lord and it's only by the Lord it's only by the Spirit of the Lord God make us more like Jesus it is our prayer Lord make us more
sing this one more time. Yeah, more, more of you, more of you, Lord. Less of me, take everything. Lord, if it's more of you, take everything, Lord. Cause all of you is all I need. Take it's all you are all we need, Lord. And more of you. Let's sing this. Come on, church. Let's take it. Let's make this our prayer this day. Take everything, Lord. Lord, we want to be like the elders around the throne room, casting our crown. Take everything, Lord, we say. It's all I need. Take everything. Yes, Lord, this is our prayer. That, Lord, if more of you means less of me, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would take, Lord. Take more, Lord, so that we can have more of you, Lord. That you may increase in our life and that we may decrease so lord we ask lord that we humbly come before you lord subjecting our lives to you lord to say lord have your way in us have your way in us yes lord we thank you lord we thank you lord that you are moving in this place and that even right now you are speaking to people in this place and you are moving hearts and you are convicting hearts that more of you in our lives is what we need so we thank you lord we ask lord that you continue to move lord as we partake of communion as we listen to your word move lord in this place move lord in our lives lord so we thank you lord church you may be seated right now i ask that you do it in a quiet orderly fashion because we're going to partake of communion right now you know every first weekend of the month we do communion and we do this to remember jesus you know so communion is a sacred act that we do and i would like to say we do it as a family of believers so if you do not profess jesus christ as your lord and savior i would just like to kindly and humbly ask that you refrain from taking but for everybody else that believes in lord jesus christ as your personal lord and savior we're going to partake of communion together you know the night jesus was betrayed he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it in pieces and he gave it to the disciples saying this is my body broken for you this is my body broken for you when he said this he was referring to his body that was about to go to the cross for us bearing the weight of our sin our iniquity our shame our sickness and our illness bearing it all upon the cross of Calvary and we know he took all of it upon the cross 
And in those final words, He said, it is finished. Signifying everything, everything taken on the cross is now null and void. Now the, the curse upon our lives has been removed. And we know three days later, He rose from the dead, victorious. So as we partake of the bread this evening, I would like to submit to you right now that as we partake of the bread, we partake by faith in saying, God, You have taken all our sin, all our shame, all our iniquity, all our illness, all our sickness upon Your body, and You said, it is finished. Now the curse upon our life is null and void. And if there is an illness or sickness in your body, I'd like to ask you to submit it to the Lord. Submit it to the Lord. Because of what He has done, now there's restoration. Now there's healing. Now there's deliverance. Now there's freedom. So as you partake of the bread, let us come by faith in saying, God, you took everything to the cross. And because you took everything to the cross, the curse has now been lifted and now there is a blessing upon my life. And I remember you for it, Lord. Not for the blessing, but for you who went to the cross. And because of that, I have that blessing. So the night Jesus was betrayed, He took some bread and blessed it and then He broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, take it for this is my body. Let us partake of the bread right now. In the same manner, He took the cup and gave thanks for it. He gave it to them and they all drank from it and He said to them, This is a new covenant in my blood which I make to you. A new covenant in my blood. The cup signifying the blood of Christ that was shed for us, cleansing us, making us righteous, allowing us now to come to the Father to come to the throne of grace, allowing us access right now to the presence of God. His blood that wiped our slate clean, not only dealt with our sin, but His blood dealt with our sinful nature, our very sinful nature. And because of His blood, we can come to the Father. And he said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So as we do this, as we partake of that cup, let us remember what Jesus has done on the cross for us. And that His blood, that His blood has made us righteous in the sight of God, that we can come before the Father. As His blood has redeemed us, and has dealt with our sinful nature. Let us remember Jesus and His work. So in the same manner, He took the cup and He gave thanks. He said to them, This is a new covenant in my blood which I make to you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Let us now partake of the cup. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your body broken for us, for your blood shed for us on the cross, on Calvary. We thank you, Lord, that because of your work, because of your death, and you rose again, that we are victorious. Because of what you did on the cross, now we have access to the Father. We have access to the throne of grace. We are made righteous through Christ Jesus. So we thank you, Lord, and we can't thank you enough. And we remember of what you did on the cross. We remember and we say we remember you always, Lord. In Jesus' most mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Let's give a clap offering to God. Jesus is good. God is good in this place. I believe, you know, in the next few days, those of you who are not feeling well, those of you who are 
going through an illness or a sickness in this place, I want you to check it out. In the next few days, I believe there's going to be healing that will take place in this place. And if that is you and you've received healing, do not be shy, do not be embarrassed about it. Come up to us and tell us about it or write to us about it because we want to give thanks to what God is doing. You know, right before I pass the time to Pastor Lichu, Pastor Lichu has a wonderful message for all of us. It's going to be an amazing me- message of prevailing in prayer. It's going to be powerful and impactful. But right before that, there is a short announcement that I would like to give out, a very special announcement, and that is going to be our Men of Valor Camp. Can I have the slide up? Our Men of Valor Camp. You know, we, there is going to be a camp and it's going to be called Be the Man You Are Meant to Be. So this is an advertisement, advertisement right now to all men, right now. You know, if you want to achieve your prophetic destiny in your life and you feel that there is a lack in you and there is a calling for more, you know, we want to invite you right now to come for our Man of Valor Camp to be the man that you are meant to be. It's happening on the 28th to 30th of September and it's going to be happening in a hotel in Malacca, Noble Resort Hotel. And the speakers for the camp, we've got top great speakers, okay? Top, top great speakers, okay? The first speaker is, I'm going to talk, I'm going to go from right to left, you know. Yeah, right to left, you'll see right there. It's Pastor Ian from Singapore 316 Church. The second speaker is Pastor Timothy Lowe. He's been to our church before. He's, he spoke here before. He's from Every Nation Church, Malaysia. And we have none other, that's why I say top great speaker, we have none other than Pastor Chu, who will be speaking. And what, who better than to share about being the man you are meant to be. Amen? So if you are interested sign up. There is a link coming up, uh, tiny.cc slash MOV2023. MOV203. Sign up there. All right. This is an advertisement to all of you men who want to achieve your prophetic destiny. All right. Right now, I just want to pass the time to Pastor Lee Chiu right now because she has a powerful and impactful word for us on prevailing in prayer. All right. Come on. Let's give a hand to God and let's welcome Pastor Lee Chiu. Wow, with that kind of introduction, it better be good. (laughs) All right, let's just have a word of prayer first. Uh, Maybe you can pray for me (laughs) after that introduction. And uh, yeah, let's welcome the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a wonderful God we have. What a wonderful God. Words cannot describe you. Words are insufficient, Lord. Lord, we thank you that we are in a very wonderful season where you are unveiling yourself, downloading, downloading to us as friends would download to one another. We are amazed at you, Lord. And so this evening, even as I try to share a little bit of what you are doing and what you want to do, even as we come to draw close to you, Lord, just help me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. We are now at Luke chapter 18. And this weekend, both Pastor Chu and I will be sharing. I don't know if you like that or don't like that, but that's how it turned out, yeah? So I'll be sharing today on Luke chapter 18, uh, and I'll be sharing from verse, uh, just verse 1 to verse 14. And then Pastor Chu will share tomorrow about the rich young ruler. So it's a completely different topic. So if you want to come back tomorrow, we welcome you. But meanwhile, just tahan uh, saya, yeah? All right? Uh, just uh, uh, enjoy me, I hope. Today, even as the... If you look at Luke chapter 18, the first 14 verses, it's really about two parables concerning prayer. And since it's about two parables concerning prayer, I felt that I should tackle that topic. So that's why... I have decided to tackle it under the title, Prevailing Prayer. So join me, first of all, in reading Luke chapter, uh, Luke chapter 18, all right? So it's on the screen, and I'm going to move aside a bit so that we all can see it. I love the big screen, so let's not... So I'm going to get you to read it so that we are all energised, all right? Um, so would you like to do that? It's Saturday afternoon, we need a bit of energy, uh, and so let's do it strong, loud... I like what Pastor Chu left to right. I don't know which is my left. Left to right, top to bottom. Okay, 
Whichever, okay? Left to right, top to bottom. You know how I discovered where's my left? I always remember the heart is always on the left. Okay, I'm a doctor, right? Heart is on the left, so left. <laughs> okay, right, come on. Because he hates it. Every time he said, turn left and I point there. <laughs> okay, come on, you can help me. One, two, three, go. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time, he refused. But finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. Then the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Now we'll stop there for a while and we do the second parable afterwards. Here is a situation where you have a widow and you know in those days, a widow is a very, very desperate situation. It is a, it is a situ situation whereby she has no one to help her. Her husband is gone. And we really don't know what, how bad she is. She may be in debt. She may have loan sharks. But the worst thing was that she was not getting justice. Perhaps the, 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 the husband had some property. It was not given to her. So maybe someone has taken it from her. But whatever was the state... It was what I would call an impossible situation. A situation which, where she was put into a corner and she needed help. And what she needed is justice from the judge to give out maybe her inheritance, maybe to get back the husband's property. But unfortunately, on top of a situation which is already bad, there was an unjust judge. So it's a double whammy. A double whammy. So when Jesus said, when you pray, do not give up. He was talking about a situation in prayer, not just a normal situation, not just normal praying, a situation in prayer that was really, really bad. There are three things that was bad. First of all, she's a widow. She's already in a situation where she is in trouble. She has no one to turn to for help. The second thing was that the judge was unjust. In other words, she, was, she needed to prevail against the injustice in the system. Wow, that's bad, right? And I believe there was one more thing that was really against her, her own faith, whether or not she would ever get this justice. Yet, in spite of that, in spite of these three, uh, maybe issues of three things against her, coming against her, her own state, maybe she's in debt, maybe she really has no food to put on the table even, and even though she has no one to turn to, and even though she may even doubt whether she will ever get her answer, and she's coming against an unjust system, yet the Lord used this situation to tell people, in spite of this, this woman never gave up pestering the judge. Now, this is not a parable comparing God to the judge because God is not unjust. And incidentally, Never giving up in prayer, which is prevailing prayer, is not twisting God's arm. That's not what the parable means. But her posture of never giving up in spite of all the difficulties against her was what Jesus was highlighting. So what does it mean to prevail? To prevail in anything is never to give up. Amen? Everybody say, never give up. So let's look at this thing, this whole parable. Even as it is about never giving up and to prevail, I want us first of all, to, I, I'm going to do this in three things, all right? There are three things that, that I want to talk about. How do you prevail in prayer? What does it mean to prevail? What are the circumstances that comes against us? Or what are the tasks that God gives us that will need us to prevail? It's not just about prayer. Actually, it's about circumstances or it is about assignments that God gives to the church to do. This is what prevailing is about. In fact, the prayer is the result of the circumstances. So three things is needed. Number one, you must know the purpose. Why that circumstance? And the, especially the purpose of God in this situation. 
Secondly, is the posture. And thirdly, the perseverance. Now, let's just look at purpose. The main thing, let's just go, in this story, is really, what is the purpose of this woman having to plow through such deep injustice? I'm going to deal with that. But I want to say this. In this parable, God, Jesus, is talking to his disciples because even the way Jesus answers is, will not God, the judge of all the earth, listen to the prayers of his chosen ones? In other words, I want to say this. For all of us here, we are all chosen by God. Amen? Amen? How many of you are chosen by God? All of us, right? There is a purpose in everything God does in our lives. There's a purpose in everything God assigns to us to do. And there's a purpose behind even situations that we are caught in and we don't know why it is happening to us. We don't know why sickness appears. We don't know why there's a, there's a, 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 a setback in our businesses. We don't know why the relationships are going so sour. We don't know why the nation is still in turmoil. We don't know why even why do we have to pray so hard and the situation doesn't change? Sometimes, we also don't even know why God wants us to go to Sabah or Sarawak to do this uh, big uh, Sarawak pastors conference and Malam Pentecost. We don't know why. But there is a purpose in everything. Incidentally, uh, so my husband told me that next year's 30th anniversary, I needed to produce a musical. Honestly, I don't know why. I'll give you the good news, my dear husband, this morning. Wow, the why was outstanding. I would say. <laughs> and it's not about the 30th anniversary either. But it sounds ridiculous, right? You need to do a musical for the 30th anniversary. 30th, my 30th. Don't I have enough work to do, right? There's, there's Sarawak Pastors Conference, there's MUFW, there's transition of the thing now, 30th anniversary. Ridiculous, right? But you know, if you come to me privately, the why, God began to unfold a why. It is the why, the purpose, that will give us the power and the strength to prevail. Without purpose, it's hard to prevail. Let's be very honest. It's very hard to prevail. But before I go on to talk more about purpose, I want to talk about the next post. Now, let me tell you one thing about purpose. This is it. What actually is the purpose of God in all the situations we are put in? One thing only. His kingdom come, His will be done. God has only one purpose. Even when He sent Jesus, His kingdom come, His will be done. God builds church. His kingdom come, His will be done. Things happening in our lives. We are shifted from one place to another. I mean, when SIBKL started in 1994, we asked the question, why? There are already so many English churches in Kuala Lumpur. Why start a Sidang Indu Borneo in Kuala Lumpur? And everybody asks us, why is Borneo in Kuala Lumpur? Wanna? <laughs> there must be a why. His kingdom come, his will be done. That is the reason for the purpose of God. So let's read this together, shall we? Our Father who art in heaven. Let's read this together. So that we, this must be at the centre of our thought when circumstances are coming against us. What is the will of God? What is the purpose of God? What is the agenda of God? His kingdom must come. Amen? So let's just read this strong, this prayer of Jesus, so that we know that whenever we enter into a difficult circumstance or whenever God asks us to do something, whenever God asks us to do, Balam Pentecostal 3, incidentally, we're going next week, my, me and Pastor Susie is going into Sarawak to train the, pastor, uh, the intercessors to prepare for uh, the, the, prayer, the pastor's prayer conference in September and the Malam Pentecostal 3. But behind that, God purpose is simple. Alright, so let's read this together. One, two, three, go. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So everything, even game on, is about his kingdom come, his will be done. You, may, you say, really man? Really play some games? Ah, go and ask Pastor Lindy. There is a purpose. If there's no purpose, why do we do it? 
Why do we do it? Why would God ask us to do it? And the ultimate purpose, incidentally, if you have not signed on, if you want to be interested, it's actually to get to, to know your, your children, your husband, your wife, your friends, your, your majong kaki. Sorry, you maybe got majong kaki. Yeah? So you're going to bring them to game on so that they know us and we know them. So it's still about the kingdom come, his will be done. Amen? The three things, postures, or responses people usually have when there is a problem. Now, this I took from Pastor Shane Payne. Pastor Shane Payne is training the watchmen, in 400 world watchmen in Malaysia. So he said this, when a problem comes to us, we usually do it this way. Three ways we can deal with the problem. Number one, we analyze the problem. Then we are very good godly people, chosen ones, right? We're all talking to Christians tonight. They will study the scriptures, and then we just apply some whatever, or we see a scripture here, a principle here, and we apply it to the problem. This group doesn't necessarily need to pray because they kind of know, okay, la, this is the problem. Well, I guess this is how we solve it. The second group, maybe it's better. This is a problem. So they look at the scriptures, they, they apply it to that, and they come up with a solution. And it is a solution that sounds pretty godly, pretty good, right? And then they pray. But when they pray, it is more like this. God endorses our plans. God, this is the problem we have. We don't have this, we don't have that. Or this is the situation in Malaysia. You know, this is the, incidentally, I'm partly also sharing this to prepare you how to pray for the state elections, right? So we have a problem. The state elections are coming and there's a green wave and da, 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 da. And we study the scriptures. God is getting injustice. God is this, God is that. And we must pray like that, like that, like that. And God endorse my prayers. That's the second method. But the third method, which where thy kingdom come and thy will be done, needs to be involved, is like that. We have a problem. There's a state elections coming. There's so many issues that have been highlighted. We are a bit terrified. Sometimes we can't be bothered. Praise the Lord, you're all not that type. Praise God. Incidentally, register for the state elections. All right? Register, go and vote. But, you know, so, so we, for us who are praying, so there's a problem. There's all these things. We study scriptures. There's injustice. There's this, there's that, and all that. And then, the third thing that must happen is not God endorse our prayers, but God, what are you actually doing in our land? Now, teach us how to pray. How, what is, does it mean your kingdom wants to come? What does it mean your will is now going to be done in Malaysia? What does it look like? What does your will being executed in Malaysia looks like? This is exactly the same way if we are going through a problem, whether in your business, whether in our family situation, even like I'm caught having to do a musical, I need to do what is God's purpose in this. Lord, show me exactly what you're doing. Put it down, to, to break it down for me so that now I will be clear about what, it, what the results look like when I prevail in prayer. This, do you know that God wants you to know what the results look like when you prevail in prayer. But if you're saja, you just pray, 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 you don't even know whether you're hitting the right thing. So prevailing in prayer is really about prevailing to know the purpose of God. And do you know this good news? God intends to download to us very specifically what He's doing. i tell you why I'm so excited, for two reasons. And this happened only this week. In fact, it only happened last night as we spend six hours prevailing in prayer. Actually, we prevailed in His presence. We didn't prevail in prayer. And as we did that, God began to unfold to me, what does it mean that when we go to Sarawak, because God has given us a verse. God says, when you go to Sarawak, basically it's based on Isaiah 43, verse 18, 19. Behold, see, I'm doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? I will have rivers in the uh, desert, and stream away, a highway in the desert and streams in the wilderness. That is what I want to do. But all these are sayings, right? What on earth does it mean? But do you know, last night, God began to download to me specifically what is this new thing that He wants to do. Now, that 
that is exciting. It's no longer vague. Do you know the Bible tells us in, I think it is in Amos, it said, God does not do things without first revealing it to his servants, the prophets. Now, I'm not a prophet, but if you spend time with God, he will reveal it to you because we've got to share it, right? We've got to share it to others. The second thing God revealed to me this morning is my husband's wonderful 30th anniversary musical. Wow, it's so specific. I'm energized by it, but it's got nothing to do with the musical. But it's everything to do with the musical as well. Now you're intrigued. Don't worry. I'm not going to tell you. It's amazing. But it begins to be so specific that I know how to prevail now to handle the musical. I know what it takes now to prevail, to see the results that God wants to give in <laughs> pastor's conference. In, in what? If you want to know what it is, come to this Tuesday's prayer meeting. I will tell you that because this, the sermon is not about that. Let me move on. Let me share with you what posture then is needed for us to know God's purpose. Now, in order to do that, we're going to read the second parable, okay? So join me to read the second parable. This is a parable in the second half about two people going up to the temple to pray. One is a Pharisee and one is a tax collector. So, come, one, two, three, go. To some who are confident of their own righteousness and look down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humble, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. So what does prevailing in prayer mean? The first thing is that we need to prevail and know the will, the purpose, if possible, the exact reason why he asks us to do something or the exact reason why this thing is happening in my life. Why is this setback? What is this setback leading towards? Why, why is this happening in our country? What is it leading towards? We need to ask God and we need to prevail. Prayer is primarily, first of all, to prevail to know the purpose, the will, and the agenda of God. But having done that, postures are needed to prevail. Without a right posture, you cannot prevail. And the first thing is this, brokenness. You see, these two men went up to the temple to pray. The first began to talk about what he has done. Very often, we look at the situation and it's really bad. And then we go to God and then we go to God and say, Lord, don't you know, I've done this for you. I've done that for you. I'm very good. I'm a good Christian. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I'm not into pornography. And not only that, I give charity to the poor. Now, oh Lord God, this situation is happening to me. You have to answer my prayer. The posture of the second man is very different. He doesn't even look to heaven. We don't know what the circumstances are. He cries in desperation, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. This posture of brokenness is very powerful because in that posture of brokenness, we are not forcing God to answer our situation according to the way we think. It doesn't do that. In this posture of brokenness, even in sickness, last week, I think a couple of weeks ago, where I was praying for some person, and this person had tremendous sickness. And I just stood there with that person, and I said, Lord, have mercy on her. Because really, I cannot explain why she has it. I cannot help her, neither can she, and all circumstances are against her. But God, have mercy on her. As I pray for even the nation, you know, this week, we had, I had prayer for a nation with a group of people. What the Lord, what we went into, in spite of everything, was, Lord, have mercy on us in Malaysia. It's not, Lord, look at us. No, the church is so good. We have done this, we have done that, we have this, that, that, and look at this, and it's still going on. Now, you, are, you must answer our prayers. It is not like that. It is the posture of brokenness 
that is needed. Now, I'm going to share you a story to make, illustrate what brokenness looks like. And it's a simple story. It may not be as uh, aligned to what I'm trying to say in praying for nations and all that. But it's about Pastor Aaron. Where's Pastor Aaron? Now, I've asked permission. Uh, last night, he shared this, and it was a very simple story, but it spoke volumes to me. And that's why I asked him for permission to illustrate. Pastor Aaron, last year, I think it was last year or earlier this year, I can't remember, he decided to take a trip to Hernhood. Now, if you don't know where Hernhood and what Hernhood is, Hernhood is a tiny little place. Pastor Chu refused to take me to Hernhood. <laughs> and in a certain extent, after hearing how difficult the journey may be, it was a good thing. Um, Hernhood is actually a very tiny town in Germany where the Moravians, how many of you know who the Moravians are? Okay, if you don't know, never mind. The Moravians started a prayer of 24 hours, non-stop prayer for 100 years. Out of that prayer came a great revival whereby the Moravians themselves sent themselves out and became missionaries throughout the world. So it's a very powerful prayer movement. And um, Pastor Aaron wanted so much to go there. And not only that, he was interested, at, as we all are, we're interested in revival. He had been reading books about uh, well, digging wells of revival. So he said, this is a powerful well. I want to go to Hernhood. But just before he went, God said, yes, it is more than you wanting to go. Now, one of the things we need to understand is that when we desire something or when we are praying for something, actually the desire to pray for something doesn't come from us. It comes from God. It actually comes from God. So his desire, God began to say, it's more than just your desire. Actually, I'm sending you on an assignment to Hernhood. And then a prophetic word was given to him. So off he went. When he, they went to, uh, of course, Hernhood is very far. You have to drive five hours from Berlin to Hernhood. But on the way to Hernhood, you can actually stop in this town called Wittenberg. How many of you know Wittenberg? Or the, you have heard of the name Wittenberg? What happened in Wittenberg? Wittenberg is where Martin Luther nailed the thesis, the, I think 34 thesis, that started the Reformation in the whole world. So that's why Wittenberg is very, very significant. Of course, I too would have loved to have gone to Wittenberg. And not only that, Pastor Aaron found out that not only was Wittenberg the place where Martin Luther, is the place where the Reformation started, but there is a place in Wittenberg where you can see where Martin Luther has prayed day and night, night and day, until there is a mark where he had prayed. And the significance of that is this. Reinhard Bonke had gone there many years ago and he had knelt at that very place where Martin Luther had prayed. And, Martin, and of course, Reinhard Bonke was, was, wow, radically transformed. So, of course, actually, I wish he had gone also, you know. Then he'd be radically transformed, right? And he would then, all the healings would come, right? So, he decided he would go to Wittenberg. He wanted to also kneel. Where Reinhard Monk had kneeled, where Martin Luther had kneeled. I too would have gone there if he had told me. However, so he started on the journey. As they went, they rented a car. The car broke down. Now, if you want to have details of the story, go and ask Aaron. He will give you details. The car broke down. And they had already started on the journey on the autobahn. Incidentally, Pastor Chiu, I am glad you refused to bring me to, uh, to, to Hernhood because it sounds very, very dangerous. Because the autobahn and driving on the wrong side of the road, I mean the, the left side of the road, was horrendous. The buses were going, the trucks were going. It was frightening. And then suddenly his tire, something happened. And the car was a rented car, and he had not paid full insurance, right? He rang the car rental company. The car rental company said, you have to bring the car back. I'll give you a new car. But I'm already 45 minutes, and I want to go to Wittenberg, and I must reach Hernhood uh, before they close the day, day at 6 p.m. I can't do that, that, that. But of course, he has to go. Lah. The car, car broken down. More, huh? So the car had broken down. I tell you what, I use the word. Huh? Remember, we're talking about brokenness. So he had to turn back. And change car and all that. By the time after everything was done, there was no way he could go to Wittenberg. He had to just forget about Witt Suddenly I can't pronounce Wittenberg. And just go straight to Hernhood. Of course they were discouraged. But, okay, Pastor Aaron allowed me to say this. God was breaking his ideas. 
God wanted him to go to Hernhut and not to Wittenberg. Now, you may say, but Wittenberg sounds a good idea. Not only that, it's a place of Martin Luther, it's a place of that. So it's a good idea, but it was not a God idea. And the reason why sometimes God cannot bring us to ultimate victory in our prayers, to ultimate achieve the goals that He wanted us to achieve, is because we always think our ways are better than God's ways. So they didn't get to go, but I'll tell you what happened. Because He arrived on time, just in time for them to close the night, He was able to follow them to the prayer meetings, and I'll just abbreviate the whole thing. The next morning, he got to visit the ancient wells of revival of Hunhut. These wells were well over, what, 500 years old? 300 years old. And men and women of God had prayed there until revival had come. But not only did he see that well, that day, he was given the privilege of going to see a new well. And this new, not new well, a new stream that had come. And this was a tiny stream that had appeared. And the, and the, the, owner, uh, the, the people who run the prayer house in Hunhut said, this spring is very important. We believe, and incidentally, what I'm sharing with you is this. God is about to do a new thing, not just in Malaysia, not just in Sarawak, but throughout the nations which are willing to follow Him. So they're showing Him, this is very significant. We believe that God is doing something that will affect revivals coming into nations. And do you know, God had given Pastor Aaron on this trip, don't know why, suddenly this number, 2117, am I right? 2117 kept appearing all the time to him. Like when, he's, uh, when he drives uh, uh, into a car park, the car next to him is called 2117. When he was watching a film, he was watching this uh, King Richard, uh, King Richard, something in King Richard also got 2117. I don't know how come he caught it. Like. Everything was 2117. But he didn't know why. But when he reached Hernhood, the Lord gave him Numbers 2117. And you know Numbers 2117? Okay. It says that spring up, O wells, spring up, spring up, O wells. Now, the secret of, the key to that was that suddenly in him, hey, revival is going to come to Malaysia. Something is about to happen to Malaysia. Something is a spell of revival. You're not excited at all. I, yeah, yeah, the wrong group. I think I might as well stop preaching and go home now. I don't blame you because you don't follow me through all my prayer journey, right? But it's exciting because we are looking. The purpose of all this Malam Pentecostal, the purpose of the bar, this is the 50th year of the Barrio Revival. That's why it's exciting. And these guys, uh, Aaron and Stephanie, they go almost every other month to pray with Rachel Bulan for the Barrio Revival. And we are going to Kuching to do the Malam Pentecostal and Pastors Conference. Why? Because something in our nation is about to happen. So he was so excited. But more than that, as he did that, even the people who went to the prayer house, they had already lost interest in revival. They were losing hope and dreams. But as he shared, it's so exciting, it's so exciting, and began to say how significant that little stream was, their hopes and dreams were revived. And I want to say this. When he shared that, I knew that God had given him a journey of brokenness, breaking his own desires so that God could speak to him something that God desires in Malaysia. Now, I'll tell you why it's so significant. I've been asking God, what is this? Because God gave us Isaiah 43. See, I'm doing a new thing. What is this thing that you're doing? And we always look at revivals as just, uh, you know, uh, a lot of signs and wonders, a lot of healings, a lot of miracles, a lot of repentance, all that will come. But in this season of the revival, God began to show me it is not, it, it doesn't start there. It starts totally different. And I just got it yesterday. That's what, before I spoke to him because I was preparing to go to Sarawak. And it was so fantastic. Do you want to know what it is? Come on Tuesday night. Because it's too long for me to explain. It's so fantastic. Lindy, you must hear it. It is just awesome. God is doing something that will truly spark from within, not from without. Amen? You look at me. I don't know what you're talking about. 
never mind. Because the next posture you need is called faith. In order for God to read, for us to prevail, actually brokenness is essential. So let's come back to down to earth. We must understand that actually, very often, why we are frustrated and we will not continue to act out what God asks us to do. We will not continue to pray through like for the elections because our ideas of what the results of the election should be and God's might be different. Now, this is where it is essential for the posture of faith. So I want to read what Jesus said in this section. All right, so turn with me, turn with me. This is where the crux of it comes. Jesus answered the disciples and began to teach his disciples in Luke 7 about the parable of the widow. He said, Look, listen, this is what is happening. In verse 7, he says, And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? I have a problem with this. You know why? Two things I have a problem with. Number one, Jesus says, don't you think God will bring justice for his chosen ones? Of course we believe that. Who cry out to him day and night. That means these are the people who have prevailed in prayer day and night, day and night. They are crying out to God. They are prevailing. Actually, this 24 hours prevailing prayer is not to twist God's arm. Remember, it's to prevail to understand the will of God, the purpose of God. And secondly, is to understand the strategies of God. The strategies of God. The strategy of God is not for Aaron to go to Wittenberg. The strategy of God is for Aaron to go to Hernhut. And if we rebel against that strategy or don't have faith in that strategy or we don't know the strategy, we cannot prevail. So that is why we need to cry day and night. But I have a problem with the next section. I tell you, he will see that they get justice. Oh no, will he keep putting them off? And I tell you, will he see that they get justice and quickly? Quickly is how long? Ah? To me, ah, if you come and tell me, ah, God will answer your prayers quickly. He will not put you off. I expect tomorrow. Don't you? Do you how many of you agree with me? You mean you're abnormal? You mean you're quickly means, oh, it's okay, lah, Lord. 10,000 years, it's okay, lah. No way, man. No way, man. I want it now and preferably now, not even tomorrow. Uh, quickly, ma. You said quickly, ma. And then some more, I'm praying for justice. You are the God of justice. Why like that? Oh, no. This is where faith is a problem. Our faith must kick in. What do we need faith in? Number one, we need to have faith that actually, that, let me read the thing in case I forget. Number one is God's timing. Three things. God's timing. His idea of quickly and my idea of quickly is a world apart. I don't know what you feel. I don't understand God's quickly. So I have a problem of faith because timing. I want my answer now. He has his timing. You know, I always wondered uh, why God only parted the Red Sea when Moses is just between the devil and the deep blue sea. Why don't you part the Red Sea a little bit earlier so by the time they come, it's nicely parted, you just walk. Why only at that point? And not only that, no. The chariots are coming already, you know. Hey, cannot run so fast, huh, you know. Why that kind of timing? So I have a problem in faith about God's timing. Second thing I have a problem is God's methods. Asked me to do 30th anniversary musical. Do you, does God really know what He's doing? Isn't it a bit ridiculous to go all the way to Hernhut just to get a prophetic word? You can get it here, ma. Why did Dr. Liao had to give up his professorship in Methodist Bible College to go and pray for revival in Asbury? Why can't he pray for revival in Malaysia for Asbury? After all, God is very powerful, but right? You pray here also can answer them, ma. Why must give up his job, go all the way to Asbury for two years and pray? And then the timing... Two years, well, why not two months? God's method. God's method is really a problem. Thirdly, what God wants to achieve, God's purposes. We sometimes have a problem with God's purpose. I'm going to give you a portion of scripture just in case we are the only ones who have that problem. Turn with me to Habakkuk. I'm going to read Habakkuk. Habakkuk, I'm so glad 
Habakkuk is like me. Okay, so Habakkuk is like me. So he starts by praying, says, How long, ah, God? How long must I call for help? Ah? And you don't listen, man. Ah? Ay, yo! I bet you he prayed like that. Not so nice. How long? Not, not so poetic. But... Do you know, I was leading a group of people for prayer during one of the G's. I think not this one, the previous one. And I still remember this girl, you know, as we were praying, praying, praying. Ah? She said, God, we've been praying for 30 years, you know. <laughs> How long? Huh? How long? Incidentally, I want you to know, God is truly more ready to give us an answer than we are. The hindrance is not on His side. The hindrance is on our side. We want short-term solutions. God is looking for entire deep solutions. Example, a prayer intercessor came to us at, uh, some t- uh, recently, two years ago, and said to, said to us, The problem of the way the Malaysian church prays over their country is this. They only want to cut the grass. But do you know if you cut the grass, uh, the grass may be cut already, but the roots of the lalang is still there. That is the problem. You only want to cut the grass. But for God, His agenda is to uproot. In fact, the verse God gave me is, I want to remove the scepter of wickedness so that even good people will not be tempted to do evil. Wow! That is the problem we have. So Habakkuk has a big problem. So I'm going to read more of Habakkuk. Huh? Habakkuk chapter 1. You can turn to your Bibles. How long, Lord, must I call for help? You do not listen. I cry out to violence. Then he said, look at your methods. Look at you, God. You are crazy. You're supposed to be the God of justice. Of course, he may not say you're crazy, lah, huh? but I'm saying it anyway. Why do you make me look at injustice? You mean to say you God of justice, you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. Don't you see it? Don't you see it? There's strife and conflict abounds. Sounds a bit familiar, huh? Sounds a bit familiar. And then, therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. In other words, he really has a complaint against God's character. What on earth are you doing? I thought you were God of justice, but look at that. It looks as if nothing can be done. Then God answers. And look at God's answer. Verse 5. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I'm going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if it were told you. I'm raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings not their own. And I'm going to read some more. The, verse 7, if, if you go to your own Bibles, they are feared and dreaded people. They are law to themselves. They promote their honour. Their horses are swifter than leopards. They are fiercer than wolves at dusk. They calvary, their cavalry gallops gallop along. They, are, they sweep down like a vulture, sweeping to devour, and on and on and on and on. If you were Habakkuk, if I were Habakkuk, and God answers and says, do you know what I'm doing? I'm sending the Babylonians as an answer to your prayer. I would say, God, you are crazy. God, I'm going to forsake you. I'm going to lose faith in you. I'm going to walk away from you because your methods are just too crazy. Now, I tell you what is happening. The problem is Habakkuk was praying that that they would be set free from the Babylonian captivity. As far as Habakkuk was concerned and us is concerned, as long as you have the right prime minister, as long as you have the right judges, we would be fine. So we want a solution to our problem that actually may not be God's solution. God's purpose in sending the Babylonians was to deal with Israel as a nation. See, when we pray for our nation, God is dealing with the destiny of nations. He's not just dealing with solutions. The destiny of Israel was going to be lost as long as the children of Israel rebelled against God. And there was no way to bring them back to Him except to inflict punishment and judgment. You may not like this word. But I want to say this to you. The reason I share this is that the world is going to get harder and harder. If you look at the situations in the world, I really don't know why we have this, but I do know that God needs to prepare our faith in Him so that when things do not happen the way we expect, we will not lose faith in God. Turn to your friend and say, I don't want to lose faith in God. The moment we lose faith in God, we lose everything because He's the only one 
holding it. You see, the question when this happened in Israel, the question is, is God in control? Is He good? Does He know what He's doing? Whenever we go through difficult circumstances, whether it is a setback in our work, whether it's illnesses, whether it's a project that God told us to do and it's gone haywire, the question that would come to us would be, is God in control? Is He good? Is he, is what he's, does He know what He's doing? Why is He doing things this way when I thought this should be a better way? This is what faith will deal with. I want to show you a picture of a very pow- a very nice picture, actually. I like this. Uh, I like it because it is amazing. Uh, I think Aaron saw this as well. Pastor Chu and I was in Berlin, and we went to the Pergamon Museum. Actually, when you go to Berlin, you must go to the museums. The Pergamon Museum is must-visit. In the Pergamon Museum, if you go there, you will now see a beautiful reconstruction of the Ishtar Gate. The Ishtar Gate was uh, built by Nebuchadnezzar. Can you imagine? They could reconstruct this. It's, still, it's actually the actual Nebuchadnezzar Ishtar Gate. The actual, this is the gate that, uh, that, that, that Nebuchadnezzar constructed. And if you look at the, the next picture, it actually looks like that in the whole city of Babylon. And even if you go to the Pergamon Museum and you stand there, it is truly, truly overwhelming. And I'll tell you what happened when we were there. Our guide, who's not a believer, said this to us. He said, imagine the Judean, the Jews, who were brought out of captivity from Babylon. Uh, Sorry, from Jerusalem. And they are coming out of Jerusalem, and they now come, imagine Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They have come out as captives, prisoners of war, from Jerusalem. They are now brought with their hands tied and they're entering Babylon. And this, of course, my Jewish uh, guide, I mean not Jewish, the, the tour guide didn't say so many things. He just said, imagine the Jews coming into Babylon and what conf- faces them, what comes against them is the might of Babylon, the awesome power of Babylon, the wisdom of Babylon. Actually, it's quite amazing. You really... If you ever get a chance, it's a must-visit museum. Just imagine it. How do they feel? You know something? Now I know why Daniel prayed three times a day. Not because he just wanted to be pure. He needed to build a prevailing faith that God was still good, that God was still in charge, that God knew what He was doing in bringing them from Jerusalem in captivity to Babylon because you and I know that because he prevailed in faith he prevailed in his prayers and that is what I believe that whole prayer of three times a day is all about he had to prevail until he know my God is a good God he has a plan he has a purpose for me his purpose is bigger than my purpose I, he is not crazy to have taken it to let Babylon defeat us he is not crazy he knows what he's doing and he's in charge how do I know that he prevailed in this because if you look the book of Daniel Nebuchadnezzar himself said it three times there is only one God Daniel your God your God is the God of gods, the Lord of laws. Second time when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was rescued from the fire. Do you know what Nebuchadnezzar did? He said, everyone who does not worship their God will be put to death. Because their God, there's no God that saves like Adrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's God. That was the ultimate plan and purpose of God for these young men to be taken into Babylon. Come on, give God a big clap. My brothers and sisters, we need to grow up and be more mature to have a mature faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And how do we grow in faith? Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, Without faith, you cannot please God. Come to the prayer this Tuesday because I will explain how this whole thing comes together. Because it says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to him must believe that he exists. In other words, what is faith? What is prevailing prayer? Prevailing prayer is, first of all, we actually have to prevail to believe that God is good. Amen? How many of you believe God is good? 
But you know it's easy to say it when we're not going through difficult circumstances. Some of our people are going through very difficult circumstances. In the midst of these difficult circumstances, the main prevailing is, is God good? Because the moment we think that God is not good, we lose our ground. All is gone. All is gone. The second thing, it says that as you diligently seek Him, that's prevailing in prayer. You must believe God is in control. It is not Babylon that's in control. It is not darkness that's in control. It is not even everything that is bad that's in control. God is in control. And thirdly, He knows what He's doing. When He asks us, do this, in spite, pray this way, seek this thing, He knows what He's doing. You know, sometimes when you read the Bible, you must imagine that when Joshua was told to march seven times around Jericho, it was pretty ridiculous. But they had the faith to do it. And because of that, they were rewarded for their faith. The key is this. If we can prevail in faith, we will be rewarded. We will be rewarded. Amen? Praise God. But how can we prevail when circumstances are tough? And this is where it's all about persevering. Now, what, is we, what do we press in in prayer? Actually, pressing in in prayer is not to ask for more or even just to cry in repentance more. It's actually the main perseverance in prayer is to know God more. Yesterday was a very wonderful time because God began to reveal the only way you can prevail in prayer as you now encounter very difficult circumstances and you've got to join God to really see the plans of God unfold in your nation, to see the plans of God, to see revival come in a brand new way that will be lasting, not just last for two years, three years. You will see the, the, the things happen that is beyond our understanding, changes that were beyond our imagination. If you want to see that, you need to prevail in prayer. But it is not to pray for these things. You don't, I think focusing praying on revival can be very stressful. Focusing praying on elections can be very stressful. Focusing praying on Balam Pentecost are also very stressful. That is not prevailing in prayer. The main thing as we go and spend time with the Lord is to know Him better. The heart of God. His ka'inginan, ka'rinduan Tuhan. What is He sad about? Do you know I was praying for the nation and the states, right? The six states. And if you're on the MUFW, they give you this press. When it came to Kelantan, you know, many of us don't bother to pray for Kelantan, Trungganu, Kedah because, you know, what for, you know? And it broke God's heart. Because in the prayer for Kelantan, there was a research paper that the highest rate of child molestation in the whole of Malaysia is in Kelantan. And the rate of child molestation is higher than that even of adult molestation. And there was a few other things there, which is very painful. There and then, the Lord was told me how angry He is at our attitudes towards Kelantan. Because as far as we are concerned, it doesn't matter. We don't live there. But God was enraged. That is what it know, means to know Him better. And unless we understand God's heart, we will be just bring, 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 but we don't know where if we hit it right and we hit God's desire and we join Him in His will, the other parts of the jigsaw will be solved. We don't see that because we don't believe that. We don't understand God's methods. But the key to prayer, to persevere, is to know God better. All right, let's just look at this, know Him, so that we will love Him. Do you know one of the postures of prayer that's coming to us as we stand before God is to have a bridal anointing. That love must flow inside us for everything that we pray for. There must be the motivation to prayer is love. If you're praying for a loved, uh, someone who's you know, a family or a friend that you want to bring to the Lord, it must be motivated by love, not just by statistics that we have so many baptisms, so many salvations. If we want to pray for the sick, it must be motivated by love. If we want to pray, for I'm praying for a friend to have a breakthrough. And the only reason why I want to pray that way is God taught me. 
it's because you love him and you want to see a breakthrough. It's not just so that sound, having a breakthrough sounds like a good testimony. A good testimony is not the reason. Loving him is the reason why I will stand there and I pray for him. So knowing him, knowing God better, loving him more, trusting him, yielding to him, and then giving in to him so that we can obey his instructions. That is really what it means to prevail in prayer. I'm just going to end now, and I'm going to share this. I know that as I was just preparing, many of us are going through very difficult situations. So I'm going to be opening the altar. If you're going through difficult situations, and yes, you know, you may say, I prayed, and, I, and God has not answered. And, and here is me saying that God said, I will come quickly. Will I not do it quickly? And you're frustrated with God's timing. Or you're frustrated with God's methods. Why God? Why after serving you so hard? Why after doing so much for you, do I have to face this circumstance? Why do I have to do that? Or you have been praying for so long for a loved one to come to know the Lord. And you're almost like giving up. Just come out. Because we're going to pray that God will be very specific in revealing a strategy. God will be revealing why. Why this is happening. So that we are deeply encouraged. But above all, I pray that as you prevail and persevere in prayer for this situation, you will begin to know God's heart. God loves that person far more than we. None of us died for our friends that we want to reach out to. None, I didn't die for this friend that I'm trying to see a breakthrough for. None of us did. Jesus did. We need to come so that we can trust God more. That He is in control. Everybody say, God is in control. God is good. God knows what He's doing. Come on, let's say, come on, why don't you stand up? Because we're going to declare scripture. The best way to know God is to declare scripture. To read the scriptures, declare it, declare it, declare it until it becomes part of you. Everybody say, God is good. God is good. God is able. God is able. God is in control. God is in control. God knows what he's doing. God knows what One more time. Doing. You say it. One, two, three. God, God is, is good. good. God, God is, is in control. control. God, God knows God what he's doing. doing. One more time. God is good. God is in control. God knows what he is doing. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to just declare this powerful verse of scripture because it shows that as we can't prevail in prayer, we must believe He's good and He's a loving God. Amen? Come, just let's do this together with me. One, sorry. One, two, three. Let's just do it because it's on the screen, right? One, two, three. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear Him, on those whose hope is in His unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His holy name. Let's do the last line again. In Him our hearts rejoice. For we trust in His holy name. One of the greatest needs as we pray and prevail through difficult symptoms is to have the joy of the Lord. Amen? To have a river of joy. To have a river of faith in Him. And joy can only come if there's faith. Or joy can only come if we know God loves us. He knows what He's doing. He is in control. He does know what He's doing. And He is good. Amen? Come on, let's say it together. God is good. God is, good. God is in control. God, is in control. God knows what He's doing. God. And I believe that. Amen. Amen. Aku percaya. Aku percaya. Come on. Aku percaya. Come on. Out to call. Come on. Just come out. Just come out and we're going to pray for you. If you're struggling in your faith, struggling in your Lord, then we pray over circumstances. You don't know what on earth is happening. I want you to come out because Lord God is in here to really encourage us, to really help us. Just come out and we will pray with you. We'll prevail with you. Yes, just come out. Tiada. Tiada.
tiada yang seperti engkau Come on, let's worship Him Begitu mengasihiku Don't be shy, if you're going through difficult circumstances Just come out, we'll pray with you Necessary that we begin to know that no matter what happens, that we must begin to have faith that God is always good, always in control, and always wise, and He has plans that will have great success. Amen. Great achievements that will be long lasting. I just want to say this to all of us: it is a time in world history to build serious faith in God, and the only way to do it is that you must know Him 
better. No matter what you're going through, it's actually these situations provoke you to seek Him more. So whatever you're going through, whether it's simple, what's hard, even as simple as you want to go to uh, Wittenberg but God don't let you, as simple as that, persevere in to learn to know God better. That's all. Because as you know God better, you can trust Him more. And as we can trust Him more, God can perform signs and wonders way beyond what we ask or imagine. Is that okay, brothers and sisters? That's the crux of today's message. The crux of today's message is this. The purpose of difficult circumstances is that we might press in to know Him better. Can you lift up your hands? Can you lift up your hands? You know, I love this song. Aku percaya. Do you know it has the word sanggup? God is more willing to answer our prayers than we realize. God is more willing to see restoration in our country than you realize. But certain circumstances must prevail before He can do it. If we only want to cut the grass and He wants to uproot wickedness, we should rejoice. Amen? Amen. And we should realize that uprooting wickedness is better than cutting the grass. So lift up your hands, brothers and sisters. Lift up your hands. Almighty God, you are truly a good God and you are truly in control. Lord, I ask, and I know it's tough, that you give us a faith in you that is not just faith itself, but a relationship to you that will cause a river of joy, a river of peace, a trust in you, a belief in your love for us that is outstanding. That no matter what happens, we know that your love will prevail. For love never fails. Love never fails. So Heavenly Father, I pray that, O oh Lord God, even this evening, that you will allow us to experience and to know the love of God that passes all understanding, that we might know the height, the depth, the length, the breadth, the love of God for us, that we will know, Lord God, that we are able to do far beyond what we ask or imagine. To God be the glory. And may the joy of the Lord, the love of God our Father, the grace of our Saviour, and the fellowship of our Lord, of the Holy Spirit, be with us until we meet again. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you for coming. Do come next tomorrow if you like to hear Pastor Chiu share. Alright, so thank you. We hope that you can join us for the prayer on Tuesday night. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. much easier for you to give. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up the connect card as we would love the opportunity to connect with you. Hi everyone, would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you, so we invite you to connect with us. God bless.